Hello everyone, my name is Zach Monier and I'm the Research Project Manager from Parker University in Dallas, Texas. I am here today to present about the clinical research screening of chiropractic patients at a teaching clinic. No authors have any relevant financial relationships with any commercial interest related to the content of this project. Clinical research remains the primary cornerstone in which advancements and clinical guidelines are created. The involvement of health profession students in research will help facilitate evidence-based clinical research in future practice. The recruitment of participants is a critical component in the success of a research study. Without successful recruitment, time spent on protocol development and data collection can be wasteful and significantly less impactful. Chiropractic teaching clinics should be a viable place to conduct clinical research due to the patient volume and the amount of data being collected. Despite these promising attributes, we have found that recruiting patients from a chiropractic teaching clinic to be a challenge. The objective of this study was to evaluate the efforts to screen new patients for a clinical research study at a chiropractic teaching clinic. This study came out of the recruitment for a larger, larger clinical trial. This was our first clinical trial in the chiropractic teaching clinic, so we really wanted to focus on the recruitment process and the different approaches we utilized. In the larger study in which these screening challenges were recognized, the interns were initially asked to screen all new patients coming into the clinic. If they had a patient enrolled in the study, they would be asked to complete e email questionnaires at baseline three weeks, three months, and six months. New patients entering the clinic were asked to complete the screener and inform consent if they chose to participate in the research study. Once enrolled, they would then complete weekly text questionnaires containing three questions. They would also receive corresponding email questionnaires at baseline, three weeks, three months, and six months. New patients were screened for study eligibility for 24 weeks from February to August of 2022. Different strategies were implemented throughout the study to help increase screening rates. At week one, multiple screening handouts were distributed to all clinician pods. The handouts contained a QR code that linked directly to the study screening survey and informed consent. The interns were asked to use this screener to assess new patient eligibility to participate in the study. Also starting at week one, all clinicians were given bi-weekly updates regarding information on total screening rates and anonymous screening rates for each pod. These meetings also included an opportunity for clinicians to provide study feedback and suggestions to help improve screening rate. Starting at week three, a new handout was developed specifically for the distribution from the front desk staff. This handout included the screening QR code survey as well as a brief introductory paragraph regarding the study. It also included contact information for the research personnel if the patients had any further questions. The front desk staff were also instructed to fill in the appropriate clinician's name for the patient and include this handout in all new patient paperwork. The interns were still encouraged to verify with their new patients that they had been screened for the study. Beginning in week five, individualized reminder emails were sent to interns and clinicians by the project manager. These emails were sent to the appropriate intern and supervising clinician 30 minutes prior to their new patient's scheduled arrival. The email reminded the intern and clinician that their new patient would be arriving soon and to please double check that their new patient had been screened for eligibility. At week 10, new clinic signage was set up for display in the clinic. This included two large freestanding signs promoting the study and multiple flyers posted by the check-in and check-out area visible to the patients, interns, and staff. Of the 2,319 new patients that entered the clinic over 24 weeks, 503 or 21.7% were successfully screened in the clinic. The lowest screening rate occurred at week three at 15.7%, with the highest occurring in week six at 38.8%. Rates decreased from our peak at week six with slight fluctuations around the 21.7% average. Our largest screening rate increase came between week three and four after moving the screening process to the front desk, utilizing the new patient paperwork. Despite the multitude of changes made to the screening process, we were unable to increase and maintain our screening rate. Poor recruitment leads to unsuccessful studies and decreases the value of data collected. One barrier of, the, of screening patients at a chiropractic teaching clinic is the lack of desire from the patients and intern to complete the screening process. Another barrier could potentially be the amount of paperwork and questionnaires the new patients are required to complete at their visit. It could be speculated that these barriers are associated specifically to the patient population seeking care at a chiropractic teaching clinic. 
In the future, we aim to create a more automated process that requires patients to complete a study eligibility screener upon entering the clinic. There is significant value for clinical research to be conducted within chiropractic teaching and academic clinics, including the growth of research data and the ability for students to participate in research. For research to be successfully done, recruitment and fidelity to a study protocol, such as screening consecutive patients, are crucial. There is a need to shift clinic culture to one of an academic clinic with ongoing research efforts. If you have any questions about this study, you can reach me at Zach Monier at parker.edu or at my cell phone at 469-358-3802. Thank you.